Okay, um, Micah, so can you def define to me what is a feminist? Like, what makes a woman a feminist? And a woman... Um, who's a feminist as far as what I'm referring to in the videos is someone who is part of a movement um, in a feminist group they have clubs they attend protests and they like to group together and plot on men and you know talk about what their boyfriend did and there's a lot of lesbians so they tend to be lesbians and they tend to choose what's best for f females above you know what is right in general. Okay. And would you say the feminist is responsible for the um, decay of the family structure in today's society, I guess? Well, I'd say yes and no. Yes, because they're contributing it to it and they see what's going on and they're trying to take advantage by making deals with the power structure as far as what is going on in that context and so they see people like Rockefeller and you have feminists like Nancy Pelosi and different women's rights groups that are pro-abortion for instance for instance what I call they say pro-life but really is pro-abortion because they wanna they've teamed up with the population control crowd they've teamed up with the eugenicists you know specific population control and population control negative eugenics and what they call the movement for the environment uh, the environmentalist movement which is really you know phony liberalism phony left-wing movement that's um, completely subverted and controlled by the ruling elite. Okay. So how would you define the absolute righteous woman's role, the virtuous woman's role, as compared to the feminist woman's role? Well, the virtuous woman is like the woman in the Bible. Okay, well, I mean the virtuous woman in the Bible is what I mean to say, and she cares about righteous principles and, you know, doesn't go around sleeping with men. Uh, she doesn't put herself above God, and she doesn't try to usurp power from man on behalf of women in general instead of on behalf of trying to further God's plan. And the righteous woman, she basically walks the path of the Christian, she, you know, the good Christian. She lives a Christian life, and she wants to get married and have children, and she wants to walk with the Lord. Um, she, like in Timothy and Corinthians, it says she submits to her husband's will, and, and she has a question about God. She asks him in her own home. And she doesn't teach or have authority above man in church. I think that's one thing that offends feminists because one thing that they think that men are using as a tool to oppress them is the church and is basically religion in general. Because religion is what tells women, you know, you should wear this hijab, you know, in Muslim countries. Or it tells women, you know, what I just said from the Bible what woman's role is and it's further elaborated on the Bible talking about what a good woman does why her man's out there gathering food you know she tends to certain things and it, it, it talks about women's role in general in the Bible in a primitive time and it's quite easy to apply that to your modern day and see that it still fits it still reigns true and that a woman's path to God is not rebelling against the rules of God because she feels she's been shunned that is what Satan decided to do. And there's nothing saying that Satan has to be a man either. And there's a story of Eve, and there's a story in the book of Enoch of Lilith, who didn't want to have Adam. She wanted, you know, a lot of lesbians look up to her as a role model. And they tend to look up to women who are in power, and they 
they completely look at the fact that this woman is in power and she subjugated men. She told men what to do, and they completely throw out who this woman actually was. Like Cleopatra. She was a slut, okay? Nefertiti, she was a heretic as far as the sun temples were concerned. So they turned on her and killed her. So whether that we truly know whether this woman was a good woman or a bad woman kind of remains to be seen. We have to dig up more artifacts about her. All we know is that she was in charge and that this this heretic king, Akhenaten, chose for her to be his woman. And we assume because she's related to some of the Egyptian um, women that, we, you know, again, we respect for the same reason as her, is, is this kind of lack of information. So all the feminists can point at to prove their point that women have authority is either women who we don't have enough information on or women who are on record as sluts like Cleopatra going out to Mark Anthony ahead of time knowing that her um, army was going to lose knowing her people were about to get taken over and what does she do? She starts bootlicking to the Romans and offering her body up in order to maneuver herself into a position of power which is totally anti-Christian totally anti-Jew and anti-humanity if you ask me Okay, so um, if women were to put down their feminist role or neglect their stance for women's rights, do you think that will open up, um, what's the word, would that now give men an opportunity to dominate women and in some cases become abusive in society towards women? Or do you feel if a woman allows a man to take the role that he can be responsible and show her equal respect? Well, it's really, it goes like the Willie Lynch letters. It goes like this. You know, in the Willie Lynch letters, they said, we take the small differences and we make them bigger. We take the difference between male and female young generation, older generation, light-skinned and dark-skinned, Christian and Muslim, race, color, gender, etc. You know, and we make one of the slaves to kind of give him a nice position, that's another way to separate them, okay? So, as far as, well, men give women a fair chance if women stop doing the feminist movement, stop protesting, they stop making a big deal of things, whether there's a valid issue or not, um, my answer would be that they would get fair treatment from a Christian ruler or a Muslim ruler who walked you know with the Lord and walked upright but as far as will they get fair would they get fair treatment in this world that's controlled by a bunch of fucking globalist eugenicist scum um, the answer to that is of course not and there's a need for some kind of struggle but my problem is exactly this is that the struggle, we're taking a serious issue like race and they're putting it together with a phony women's rights movement. The movement should be for what's right versus what's wrong. So we talk about women's rights, what is right? Okay, what is right is not going against God and the, and the overwhelming influences within the women's rights movement are going against God. So they'll get a fair shake if everybody got together and put down and, and stopped going different ways in the movement and united under a Christian ideology, a Christian school of thought saying that this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna say that we want equal treatment, we want to give the black man his credit, we want um, to give marginalized groups a chance, a fair shake, and that includes women who, who are raped and abused, but to make that an issue that we that women focus on and give them a power a center of power is detrimental to society because we have divided man we've created a powerful group that divides that's after man that's going after the church okay we need to take the righteous women from that group attach them to a christian movement and disband and disregard the fucking plotters the subverters and 
the minions of the New World Order who are placed there quite strategically to bring about a New World Order.